Contrary to what many people believe, esports have been around for decades, just not as sophisticated as they are right now. The first ever video game tournament can be dated back to the 1980s, where around 10,000 players competed against each other trying to get the highest score on Atari's Space Invaders. Years later, the gaming world record organization Twin Galaxies began to actually keep record of all top player scores in games like Space Invaders and Donkey Kong. However, Esports as we know them today started during the 90s. Thanks to the technological developments of the time, players were now able to play against others around the world thanks to the local area network. These new technologies enable more competitive games like the two-dimensional one-on-one fighting game Street Fighter and many of the computer games that are still played nowadays, such as the first-person shooter Doom or Quake, or the strategy-based game StarCraft to be played in bigger scales. Since then, esports kept on growing and growing. So much so, that in 2019, hundreds of players gathered in New York to participate in the Fortnite World Cup, where the prize pool was around $30 million. On this event, the 16-year-old Kyle Geisdorf, known inside of the game as Booga, was the last man standing out of hundreds and after scoring 59 points, he was crowned as the solo finals winner of the Fortnite World Cup, which meant he was going home with a shiny trophy and $3 million. I am a video game player myself, although I have no intention of doing it professionally. I still enjoy watching the professionals play though. I think this new industry is a great way where a lot of young people whose passion is gaming are able to build a career and make money doing what they love. This is why I believe it's important that as a society we all accept and give the recognition to the esports industry so that it is able to continue developing. Sometimes, video games are still viewed as something bad and people that play them professionally do not get the respect they deserve from society. Because of that, many talented players give up on their dream of going professional and the lack of opportunities makes it hard for the esports industry to continue growing. Esports should be considered as a real sport and therefore they should be treated like one, receiving government funding as well as support from other organizations and maybe even participating in bigger events like the Olympics. So that way the industry can keep growing and developing and in the future become an actual respected and viable career. Some say that esports shouldn't be considered real sports because they don't require any physical effort or any preparation. And while this might be the case for some of the amateur players, professional esports athletes have to follow a strict regime, as well as specific training, just like any other real sports player would. On an interview done by the tech company Intel, Philadelphia Fusion's Overwatch League player Eli Gallagher, in-game known as Elk, shared that he had never been to a gym prior to joining the team. But now that he's a part of the team, Physical training is a part of their daily training regime. During the interview, Gallagher said, Fusion supplied us with a cable machine, lots of dumbbells, a bench press, deadlifts, and basically a lot of basic equipment, which has been nice. A lot of similarities can be found not only in the training regimes, but also in the competitions themselves. Professional esports tournaments, such as the previously mentioned Overwatch League, follow similar formats to what professional sports do, like having a regular season calendar, which leads to playoffs and finally crowns a champion, or if that's not close enough, the EA Sports FIFA competition E La Liga Santander follows the exact format real life soccer does. There is a certain amount of skills required to be a part of the professional scene of video games, but many people still refuse to consider esports as real sports, claiming that they do not require any physical effort during the actual event, and that the players do not rely on their physical abilities to be better than others. An argument often used by people against esports is that athletes rely on machines to perform their discipline. In this case, video game consoles, controllers, or PCs, but doesn't car racing do that too? One of the most important nations within the esports scene is South Korea. According to the national interest, the Republic of Korea's professional gaming industry is worth $6.4 billion, which translates to approximately 8.8% of the country's 2018 total trade surplus, and as much as 67.2% of its cultural content industry. And this is what sets them apart from the rest of the world. The way esports and video games in general are so deeply embedded into the country's culture. The city of Seoul, for example, is filled with gaming cafes, where people rent the space for an hour so that they can use the computer and play games like League of Legends or StarCraft. Visiting these places has become a regular thing in many South Korean teenagers' lives, 
who quickly began climbing the ranks inside of these games and upon realizing the potential the youth had inside the gaming industry, South Korea's culture ministry created the Korea Esports Association, which is one of the responsible for managing all the resources such as merchandising, streaming, sponsorship, ticket distribution, as well as organizing the competitive scene's bigger events. South Korea is the best example of what can be achieved with the support of the government as well as the will of people to keep an open mind about video games. Nowadays, many esports accredited academies operate across Seoul, and they not only provide young talented players with opportunities to pursue a professional gaming career, but they also generate thousands of new jobs for non-players. According to an article published by the National Interest, the Culture Ministry expects over 100,000 new jobs to be added by mid-2020s to support the booming South Korean esports infrastructure of producers, designers, engineers, promoters, and organizers. However, things are not that different here in the West. The US, for one, is also considered one of the upcoming esports powerhouses. It might not be quite on the previously mentioned nations level just yet, but programs have been implemented to foment the growth of the industry. There are plenty of colleges that now have their own esports team, and most of them offer scholarships for talented players, giving them the opportunity to continue their studies while they pursue a career within the esports industry. For example, Oakland University has its own esports organization at Oakland Esports, and became the first Division I university in Michigan to implement a varsity esports team to its athletics program. My proposal for a solution to this issue is very simple. As I just mentioned, Oakland University has its own esports organization with teams that compete against other colleges in games like Super Smash Bros, Rocket League, or League of Legends. And just like traditional sports, esports is a way for students to build school spirit and connect with fellow students. Having a varsity esports team will provide players and viewers alike another venue to share their gaming passion and pride in Oakland University. A great way of supporting both esports scene as well as our college is by just engaging with the content. You don't even have to play video games. You don't even need to like them. But I'm sure that your younger brother, yeah, the one that plays Fortnite for like 7 hours straight, he probably watches a lot of replays and streams of people playing video games, so by sharing OU Esports content with them, you're helping with the program's growth, and simple things like a retweet or turning into the stream can be great ways of supporting the organization, 